Welcome to Lambda School's Introduction to the Terminal. My name is Dan Frainer. I'm an instructor here at Lambda School. And today we're gonna to learn about how to use the terminal, what it is, why we use it, and we'll go over a few basic commands to get us started with the terminal. Uh, throughout your development career, you may hear the terminal referred to by many different names. Uh, the terminal, the command line, the bash terminal, just bash sometimes. Uh, for Windows users, you'll hear it referred to as git bash, uh, and the shell, amongst others. For the most part, when you hear these words, the person is referring to the terminal, and what we'll go over today. A few things the terminal is not. It's not the PowerShell, uh, and it's not the Windows command prompt. So if you are a Windows user and you're in either of these and you're not an advanced user, um, you're in the wrong spot. You'll be needing to use git bash. For those Windows users uh, that uh, have not downloaded and installed git bash, now would be a great time to do so. Before we get started, let's talk about what the terminal is. Throughout the time in our lives that we've been using computers, most of us have always relied on what's known as a graphical user interface, or GUI for short. This is built into our operating systems and it allows us to access our file structure to create, modify, delete files and folders. Um, if you're a Mac user, you're probably very familiar with the Finder. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you're probably very familiar with my computer. Uh, these are fantastic tools uh, for, to use for an average user and what they need to accomplish. Uh, but today, you're going to be stepping away from the title of average user, and you're going to be stepping into the title of developer. The terminal allows us to access our computer at a much deeper and powerful level, in a way that a GUI never could or even would want to. It allows us to communicate with the core of the computer directly without going through a middleman like a GUI. The terminal is a very powerful tool for developers, and you'll be using it a lot in your professional development career. The terminal we'll talk about today is known as the bash terminal. A little word of warning before we get started. Uh, first things first, the terminal might look scary or intimidating at first. That's okay. You're gonna become very accustomed to using it with time. Um, this is a tool that will be needed in your development career, uh, and it is intimidating. Um, but the sooner you get started using it, the more comfortable you get with it right away, uh, the more successful you'll be in the long run. Um, before we start, there is a small warning. The terminal removes many safeguards put in place by our GUIs uh, that we may have come to rely on. It will be important to understand where these safeguards do not exist. We're going to go over one of these later in this video. Um, and for the most part, everything is normal, but a couple of caveats, which we'll go over later. Everything I teach you here today and everything we ask you to do at Lambda School in your terminal is safe. Um, although, um, something you may find on the internet might not be completely safe. So we just want to make sure that you don't copy and paste anything into your terminal unless you know exactly what it does or it comes directly from us. If you have any questions whatsoever, reach out to your PM or to your instructor. Um, but once again, everything we're gonna go over today is safe and everything we'll ask you to do here at Lambda School is safe. Um, it's not easy to mess something up in the terminal. Uh, you really have to go out of your way, but there are malicious things on the internet and we just know that copying and pasting random code that you don't understand um, could be dangerous. All right, now that we've gone over a few things, let's hop into our terminal and get going. Um, for Mac users, in order to open your terminal, you can press Command spacebar and then type in Terminal and Enter. For Windows computers, you'll want to open your Git Bash. Uh, and for Linux users, you will probably know how to enter your terminal if you're a Linux user, but if not, reach out to one of us and we'll get help with that. So what's gonna happen uh, is you'll see a screen very similar to this. Uh, it, it probably is gonna look like nothing at first. You'll have usually the name of your computer or if you're on Git Bash on Windows, 
you'll see uh, the path of the git bash you're on. Um, and something similar to this. Usually all most terminals are, are a little bit different. Um, I brought up my finder to just show you how they are similar. So first things first, um, let's go over the first command, which is ls. You're gonna type ls into your um, terminal and you press enter. And ls stands for list. It's going to list all of the contents of the current folder or what we refer to as directories that you're currently on. When you open your terminal, you're gonna always start out in the top level directory of the computer. Uh, the same as if you were just to open my computer or finder um, and look, let's compare what we have here. We have a folder called applications, applications, off demo, off demo, et cetera. And you can go down the list and you can see that they're all very similar. <clears throat> Uh, they're the same exact folders, actually, not similar. Um, and so we can see that all those folders are the same. So we are in the top level folder here. Now you can do ls as many times as you want, and it's always just going to list the contents of that folder or directory that you're in. Uh, a few things to, to note about ls. When you see the names of items and they're not followed by a .js or .doc or, or any sort of uh, .command, that means that these are folders. Uh, and you uh, can go into folders. In just a moment, we'll show you how to do that. Um, it doesn't look like we have any files on here. So these are all folders because they don't have any .dot prefixes to them. <clears throat> So ls, remember, is going to list all of the items. We can also do a clear, and it'll just clear our screen for us so it's not all cluttered. The next command we're gonna learn about is cd. And cd stands for change directory. Change directory allows us to enter into a folder or a directory um, that we want to. So let's go find a folder we'd like to enter and type cd folder name. Let's do a little ls first. Um, and let's go into demo one right there. So we'll say cd and we just type the name of the folder we wanna go into. A very nifty trick is just to type as much as you want and then press tab and tab is going to autofill as much as it can for you. So if we see something like off up there, and we see we have off demo, off demo JWT, and we press tab, it's gonna say demo, and then it's gonna ask us to fill the rest in. Um, but a little trick, we're gonna go into demo one. The thing about the terminal is Oftentimes, you do not get a lot of feedback from the terminal. If we go into demo one in our finder here, we see that we're in that folder. Now let's do an ls. And now we'll see we have the node modules, folder, right? There is no dot on it. We have package.json, so we know that's a file. And we also have yarn.lock on it. So we know that's a file. So there's a folder, there's a file, and there's a file. What happens if we cd into a file? Package.json. It's going to tell us that package.json is not a directory. And remember, directory means folder. Uh, so we can cd into node modules because it is a folder. And if I ls this, it's probably going to be very big. Oh, it's not that big. All right, so that's cd. Um, a couple of commands that we should know with CD. So now we know how to go into something, how do we get back out of it? Very simple, we say CD and then we give a space and two periods. Enter that and it'll come back out of that folder. And we can see we're in there and we CD back up again and we LS and we'll see that we're back into our top level folder here. Another way of doing this, um, 
we'll see that we're in that node modules folder again. We can simply CD and then use the little tilde. And the tilde means take us all the way back to the top. No matter how deep you are, that tilde will take you back to the top. We LS and we find out that we are back at the top. So that's CD for change directory. All right. Next, now that we know how to traverse our file structure and to see what files are in, I'm actually going to delete this or just close that finder out. We have a little bit more space here. I'm going to clear it once again. Now we'll talk about how to create new folders and files. So the first one, the first command I'm going to tell you about is called make directory. And remember, a directory is a folder. And from this point forward, I'm always going to refer to folders as directories. Uh, and is what you'll hear anyone talking about the terminal or bash or uh, get bash as, as directories, and you won't really hear anyone call them folders. So we're going to say make directory, and make directory is very simple, mkdir. So mkdir is going to tell our terminal that we want to make a new directory, and we'll give it a name. We'll say terminal demo. And of course, it gives us no feedback whatsoever. But usually on your terminal, if you don't get an error, that means it worked. We can find out for ourselves by typing ls, and then we'll see that terminal demo is in our file structure now. Uh, so how do we get into that folder? Right, It created a new directory for us, uh, and it created an empty directory. How do we get into the directory? change directories, of course. So I can say terminal demo, press enter, ls, and we shouldn't get anything to appear on the screen because there's nothing in the directory yet. So remember, mkdir, and the name of the directory you want to create, and now we'll see that that is in our directory that we've just created. MKDIR, make directory. Uh, now that we've made a directory, we can create a new file as well. And to create a new file, we just type touch. T-O-U-C-H. Touch and then the name of the file. Now let's say, let's call this new file.js. We're going to be using a lot of JavaScript. Um, files in our in our class so we'll just get used to the .js syntax now and we'll say touch that new file of course doesn't give us any feedback but if we ls we should see that new file has been created uh, one thing to remind yourself of is this new file just exists as a file there's nothing in that file yet uh, you're gonna have to open that up in your text editor you can add stuff to that file, save it, but that's where it will always be. So that command again is touch, and then the name of the file you want to create. Finally, for our last command, we have the remove command. Uh, remove will remove a file, but it will not remove a directory. Uh, uh, removing a directory is a bit more advanced command, uh, and it has a few more repercussions, and we'll go over it later in the course. Uh, but for right now, let's just focus on the rm command. This is the first warning I'll give you. Uh, most of us are accustomed to a warning before we remove a file. If we open up our finder, and we say we want to remove this file, and we where's our, move to trash. Um, then we'll get some sort of, are you sure you want to delete this file? And then even after that, it'll appear in our trash can or our recycling bin. Uh, RM does neither of those things. So if you tell your terminal to remove a file, it will remove that file without any warning. Uh, and you, it is irreversible. So before you 
Use the RM, make sure that this is a file you absolutely want to get rid of. Uh, if it's not, or maybe you want it to some other place, go ahead and pop open your Finder or your My Computer and use this way of removing it. Uh, that will allow you to get your file back in case you, you mistakenly remove something. But if you're 100% sure you want to remove it, you type in RM and the name of the file you want to remove. And like I said, without warning, without any sort of prompt asking you if you're sure, it removes the file. And we can go into our trash and we can look for that file and it is not in here. All right. So uh, that is our first and only word of warning for this uh, video today is make sure that if you use the RM function or, or the RM command that you want to remove that file. So let's go over a quick recap of the terminal commands we learned today. First and foremost is ls, which is list. It lists all the files in the directory that you are currently in. And I can see in my terminal that I'm in the terminal demo directory here. cd is change directory. So we can cd into a new directory, and we see that we are in the demo directory now. We can cd out of a directory using two dots, and we can see that we are in the terminal demo directory now, in ls, and we can cd all the way, we can change directories all the way back to the top level directory. And we see that we are in the top level directory, which is designated by the tilde. We have learned to make a directory. And we've learned to make a file. And we see that demo.html is the file we've created by using touch. And terminal demo one is the directory we've made by using mkdir, make directory. Finally, we've learned to remove files. And we've removed the files by using the rm command. We say rm and the name of the file we want to remove. And without warning, it removes that file for us and we no longer see it in our folder. That sets it. That's it for us for the terminal. Introduction to the terminal. Uh, thanks for watching so much. You're now on your way to becoming a developer. And now go and practice a couple of these terminal commands. Uh, get used to navigating through your file structure. Uh, nothing we went over today is could ever be damaging to your computer. Um, just remember, don't remove files that you don't want to permanently delete. Uh, but feel free to add and create directories. Uh, feel free to remove files and feel free to, to navigate through your own computer using the CD command and LS to list all of the items in your computer in that directory. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.